Sira, and I'm the brand founder of uh, Hana Dazzle Organic Skin Care. I'm the chief formulator and I uh, help women to combat uh, acne and sensitive skin through my uh, products. And my celebration is that after such a long time, I started this business as Side Hustle. And finally, I'm scaling the business and um, we're going to open our first booth on 21st January, which is which is very um, scared at the same time <laughs> because it's the first time. So, but but I'm going to go through with it. So that is what I'm celebrating. I can see myself moving towards um, my dream business. And I'm here to listen to Dala and uh, share uh, the entrepreneurship view. Thank you. So you are all in a, for a, re, a real treat. I'll introduce um, Darla in a bit. And um, I've known Darla since 2018, right? And so much changes happened to me. So I'm very excited that she's here to share with all of you because uh, there's a lot of things, um, uh, important nuggets, um, that tips that you can also uh, apply in your business. Yeah. Um, now we have Farida Angklong Queen from Singapore. Go ahead, Farida, introduce yourself. Are you celebrating? Yes, uh, hold on. Can you hear me? Okay, good. Good morning and assalamualaikum to the others. Now, um, yeah, I am Farida Jama from Singapore, founder director of Ethnic Music Connections. Oh, so many celebrations, especially with Naraisha, our other team member of uh, people in the same connection uh, network. Um, wow, how where do I start? <laughs> um, uh, in terms of work, well, I teach. <clears throat> For those who don't know me, I teach the uh, the instrument called the Anklong. Uh, let me walk through a little bit because my instrument is here. <laughs> okay, so this is it. I was going to turn on my computer, but it went straight. I checked on my I checked on my phone, and then it went straight into your Zoom. So um, okay, I'm using my handphone right now. So my my focus is a bit off. So this is the instrument. Uh, each is each student plays basically one, but usually even more. And then if I play alone, it can be on a rack. And then I help schools um, establish uncle in, uh, on songs. I also train other instructors. I have a few freelancers, uh, basically teaching across educational institutions from, from pre-primary to even university, using the instrument as an educational tool also for corporate training, uh, for uh, music as a form of uh, mental wealth, mental wellness uh, practice um, to release, to invigorate people's energy, right? So um, celebration is, <clears throat> I've got a new school in my list, so it'd be very exciting to start a primary school. I only have one primary school at the moment and two secondary. So yeah, so celebration is, uh, is something new for this year. And then um, more uh, partnership vibes connecting with Naraisha to do um, more um, for special needs children. I'm already doing that, but there are some other special needs children as well. Connecting with music for um, the marginalized families, uh, the children of the fam marginalized families, that's that's in the uh, lineup, not done yet for this particular group of people. So essentially, there's just too many to share. Um, so I'm just so happy to join everybody here. Thank you. Thank you, Farida. Now over to Hariati and Aisha, if you are there, go ahead. Um, just introduce yourself and what are you celebrating? Okay, good morning everyone. I'm Harriet Lee from Singapore, founder of Rapid Space Winner. And uh, last year I met my partner, Noraisha, and uh, we have our, we collaborated and we had our Rice Space Winner Empowerment to transform people uh, aura and to lose weight uh, with no yo-yo effect. So um, today, right now, I'm alone. <laughs> I, I forgot to delete Narasha's name because she's having a uh, three-in-one queen massage today morning. And yeah, she called me just now. Are you ready? I said, ready what? Because after the morning prayers, uh, so what, I <laughs> back to sleep. <laughs> So I say thank you, thank you for uh, wake me up. So Alhamdulillah, I'm grateful um, to attend today morning session to to learn and to know more 
about Darla, is it? Okay, so uh, looking forward. So, uh, sorry, I'm not ready to open up my video because, uh, and then uh, moving forward, what I celebrated with uh, Norasha yesterday, it just, uh, uh, we're just happy for for simple simple occasion we are happy and we uh because uh we have uh so many um uh strategies so many ideas that we need to focus out uh need to deliver and for us we are looking for uh we're looking forward to farida uh to join us our program for the especially for the hours and uh, um, I cited why because um last thurs, last few days Thursday, um I met her, we had a good bonding, uh understand and yeah looking forward to transform golden age people like Farida to be slim sexy maxi for twenty twenty two inshallah thank you. Thank you, Hariati. And uh, just came in also Yuna. Yuna is uh, also our private client. Um, Yuna, are you available? Um, just introduce yourself and what are you celebrating? Go ahead. Are you there? Ready? No? Okay. Her mic is not on yet. Uh, when you are ready, you can raise your hand later, yeah? Or you can type in the chat. Okay, um, just give me one, a few more minutes for me to just go through uh, what today's session will be about and what our intentions are. So today is, um, we're going to be talking about uh, setting up and starting up and soaring your business, yeah? So this will this is a title that Darla uh, said to me when I uh, when I invited her to, to share with all of you. And, um, you know, I was, I was the, when I first heard that, I was like, that's exactly what people need. Because how many of us actually start businesses without knowing all the, you know, how to do it right? Just, they just start and just, oh, because I love to do what I love to do, whether it is helping people become slim or uh, baking or healing, but there are no, no proper structures and no proper directions or clarity on how to make it scale. And that's why people get stuck over and over again, including myself. And that's when I, you know, I really got into <clears throat> uh, working um, on my business, not in my business, but on my business. And I find that right now, um, somebody was telling me yesterday, you know, I don't know how you and uh, Zil do it. You, you seem to be like, so, you know, doing so many things and all that. It's like, like the whole day you're working. And I say, okay, I tell you what my day is, okay? We sleep a lot. We Netflix, we watch Netflix a lot. <laughs> we uh, eat a lot. Uh, we do business. Yes, we love coaching. I go horse riding. I do my archery, you know, and I, I and right now I just had uh, my monsieur message me and asked me to come about 1.30 for massage. And I'm like, wow, so excited. That is how my day is filled mostly, you know. It's all a lot, a lot about living in joy, self-care. Oh, yes, and swimming and running and all of those things that, that um, I love to do. And yes, I do run a business. And right now I notice um, ever since I work with Darla also, I've been um, scaling my business and, you know, I'm earning more and doing less behind the computer. And yet I'm still servicing my clients. I'm still doing my corporate training. And I even have new hobbies and, and fun stuff that I'm taking up like horseback archery, right? And it's not, it's not something that's one time and you become a good horseback archer. It's like a whole series of things um, that I, I have to pick up and learn. And it's a new skill basically. So um, that's why I'd love for all of you here to be um, you know, uh, loving the, your business and loving your life as well, right? So. So um, just very quickly, this is the family leadership community. And I started this community during COVID, uh, just before COVID. The way the model was running, it was totally events-based. We, uh, we, we, we did high teas, um, but since COVID, everything has gotten online and you know we have gotten people around the world uh, to be part of this. And the reason why I started the family leadership community, um, it is a women's leadership group under the Live a Legacy platform to develop and empower women as leaders and contributors to the growth of the economy, people and planet. Yeah? And uh, these this are the people that I love to work with, women, who are in their leadership, uh, they, they lead through their feminine and they are you know, making, making things happen for the people and planet. They are making changes. They are protecting the environment. They are protecting the animals. They are um, instilling love and respect more for, 
for the world. And these are the people I'm very excited to be working with. And that's why um, I, I set up this community so that we can all be here. And also I'll, I'll be working and coaching for those people who are really going into, um, you know, uh, growing their business and leaving an impact at the same time. Yeah. So these are some of the pictures that I have done before. Uh, this is uh, with Gina Devi in 29, uh, 2020, when, you know, just before COVID, we were in India, I was in the Queen program. And also, I'd love to thank Darla for, you know, she coached me to get into the Queen program. And I think I know some of you know my story about how my money mindset was before. Like, I couldn't even pay $500 for a coach because I thought it was so expensive and also my credit card would not, would not go through, you know? So, so it took one step and then after that I applied and 2018, I got into a slightly higher end one and Darla kind of coached me to get into the, the, the uh, 7,500 program. And then after that, it was, a uh, I can't remember anymore, 25,000, you know, that, that, but it's, it's now money is like something I find, that is abundant and it takes a mindset shift and a lot of a lot of my own personal programming um, has helped me back and I I believe that women once they step into their their money mindset power and and their leadership and that um, you know they step into their power and and knowing who they are they can achieve so much so much more you know and that's why I'm here to support all of you and during uh, during the COVID um, uh, time. Um, this came out in the entrepreneur magazine, uh, entrepreneur website, and entrepreneur magazine. And sorry, Forbes. I think um, that the best uh, countries that dealt with um, coronavirus were all led by women. Yeah. So yay to us. Yeah. So um, when when I set up this community, also I wanted to get women to lead through their femininity and uh, create conscious businesses. Um, and teams, you know, those of them who are in corporates and also connect with other conscious business owners and family leaders around the globe as well. And uh, for us um, in this business, um, Zil and I have been in this business for many years and we've worked also with the homeless, the marginalized communities, the, the sex workers, um, now refugees, yeah. Uh, a lot of things that we we notice while you know helping them, giving them um, food, and 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 uh, trying to help them come out of poverty. There are two things that are, a lot of them are held back because of their mind. Um, first of all, is their mindset, right? Mindset that um, they are meant to be poor. They are meant to be uh, where they are, status quo. Um, and also, when I work with even CEOs, business owners, and leaders, a lot of the things that hold them back. Is the mindset issue and the other thing is finances yeah they're always stuck in uh, financial challenges over and over again and when we set up the the leave a legacy community and the family leadership community this was what we wanted to cover to help uh, people in our community develop um, it's not just about business it's a lot of personal growth it is uh, leadership skills it is business connection and most important we want to work with people who create social impact. You can do a lot of, you can create a lot of money in your business. You can um, create a lot of amazing products and services, but does it do good also for the people and the planet? And that is what we want business owners to be able to contribute back to um, the people and planet through their social impact. Yeah, As they grow their business, they are also cleaning the environment, uh, elevating uh, human capital or eliminating poverty. Yeah, So how we work also is these main issues, which is the money mindset, uh, building confidence and building resilience in the business owner. Uh, we also work with them on developing their uh, personal branding, business branding, uh, finding who their ideal clients are, and also how to pitch with presentation skills, uh, pitch, uh, uh, sell, selling skills, um, you know, pitching to investors, and most importantly is creating that social impact in your business and your legacy. Yeah. So um, for the last couple of years, uh, this has been what we have been doing. Every training also contributes to the low income, homeless and refugees. Um, and uh, we have that one help one model. Um, so we've seen it grow. We've seen, and you know, some of the refugees are even, uh, refugee leaders are also in our community, in the leadership community um, under uh, love and respect as well. Uh, one of them is uh, Hassan. Hassan is now running his own uh, network of volunteer uh, volunteers 
In Malaysia, she has around 100 over, which includes a lot of uh, international volunteers as well. And when we met Hassan, he was only 15. Now he's 22, right? So um, when he was 15, he was going through some uh, a lot of trauma, you know, because of the war. And he saw his own cousins uh, die in front of him. And uh, when he came to uh, Malaysia, he had a lot of uh, issues. But we, not, we, we found that he's such an intelligent boy. And we coached him. We brought him to our house, you know, and together with our daughter, Munira, who's now 15 years old. Here she's, I think she's about... Um, 10, I think, uh, at that time, um, we taught him on how to uh, be a better pre presenter, yeah, to speak better, and teaching him on how to deal with his, his um, anger and depression. And uh, right after that, when he applied all the learning, he set up the volunteer network. He started to appear in the media and talking about refugee causes and all of these things. We were just like, wow, we were looking from a third person point of view. All we did was we, we coached him and we were on the phone with him um, you know, regularly and we just saw him saw. He just applied and saw, he just applied and saw and he became a TEDx speaker. So all of these amazing things that we know, somebody from a background who was very um, challenging can actually do what, what they are doing right now. And he is about to finish his, his university. Um, and, you know, he wants to go and deepen his studies in education. And right now, um, you know, we're so proud of him. Yeah. And another person is Yusra Yamani, um, single mom, no education, uh, abused uh, when and, and uh, in a war torn country in, in Yemen. She managed to come out with her son, her 10 year old son. Now her son is, no, her son at that time was eight, I think. Now her son is uh, 14. And uh, she attended our. Uh, personal branding workshop and we worked closely with her and after that she started becoming visible on television with her broken English she didn't care she wanted to talk about the refugee causes she talks about women empowerment uh, giving independence to women because she felt what it was like in Yemen and now <clears throat> when she stepped into her family leadership she is doing amazing things yeah um, and she set up her own beauty salon here in Malaysia and soon you know she will be uh, moving over to another country so we will be I work very closely with her to really impact the not only Yamani uh, community but the community in you know um, uh, across across the the refugee uh, backgrounds yeah so these are the people that we work with so, as some examples and as we notice businesses, um, suffer during um, COVID. We we felt that a lot of the the problems could have been solved when it's planned out properly. And we're very grateful that um, like Zill and I, uh, we managed to pivot really fast in 2020 within the month. And when we started bringing our business online, we made it relevant um, to the current situation. Um, we you know our whole year's earnings normally that we projected was earned in one month you know so we know that is so possible for everyone out there who want to who, who intend to start a business yeah and this is also important um, because you know as we navigate through for some of you who have attended charlie ang session on um you know the the he's a futurist he's already predicting trends in the world so you know he mentioned about covid was just the first minor pandemic there will be more coming and you've seen it over the last two years yeah uh, over the two years there are new ones coming up and you know people like us who have been aware of all of this we we knew it was coming so you know somehow we have we learned to um, navigate it uh, wisely and and also creating a business that is um, sustainable so that you know with all of this whatever crisis that comes up aside from the pandemic there will also be financial crisis and it's already happening um, even so food security issues, which we are also preparing right now, working on it, climate crisis that we are experiencing, especially here in Malaysia, um, with all the floods that's happening, um, how are we resilient? How is our business and our life resilient through all of this? Yeah, And you don't have to just survive. You can thrive during all this time and help other people at the same time. And that is our goal, right? So, um, you know, the last a couple of years, uh, the last two years since COVID, we've seen a lot of transformations, including the, the amazing women in this in this uh, Zoom here. Um, this is uh, by someone who, you know, came in almost bankrupt and she said, you know, uh, she almost hit 25K. Now she's um, regularly having her, her five-figure income. 
um, Huda, you all know Huda, who is also now working with us uh, as a mentor for those in the digital, uh, going into digital. So she she has also transformed her business in one year with us. Um, this one is a, uh, someone from Malaysia who also got uh, started charging in euros. Yeah. And before that, it was like, oh, nobody will buy because we are in, you know, we are Malaysians, cannot afford. So it's like as you get past that mindset of people cannot afford because they are, they, you know, they are um, paid in ringgit, right? So, you know, why not charge in US dollars? When, and she went even like, why not charge in euros? And that's what that's what happened. Yeah. You can. When you when you say you can, you can. Yeah. So all of this uh wonderful outcomes that we have yeah 2.5k in the bank ching amazing amazing work and uh, this is huda as well but uh before that i'd love to uh i i i won't play her video but i think most of you have seen it and if any of you would love to share some of your testimonies also you can put it in the in the chat we'll be very grateful uh, for that and um now, without further ado, I'd love to have Darla now to just share about the beautiful message and very important message for all of us, yeah, to be resilient, to keep our business um, intact and, and let it thrive so that we can do more good in the world. So Darla, this is, I would say whatever is written here is, um, it's very mild, yeah. Um, he to me is like beyond more than just a, a speaker, coach and author. Um, you know, what Darla has done for me is that <clears throat> she has made my mindset grow within, within two years, I think in less than two years with, and it just took that one step for me to, to have that faith, you know, in God, in myself, that, that I can do this. And that's what a coach, that's what a good coach does. This is an amazing coach does that she can see things that you cannot see about yourself. And that's why I, I, I'm so grateful that she is here to share with all of you. So please take your notebooks out, ask questions, <laughs> uh, raise your hands if you can. And without further ado, I'll pass it over to Darla. Yay, everybody give her a round of applause. Let's welcome Thank her. you. Oh, Mercedes, thank you so much. It's been such an honor and thrill to be on this journey with you and Zeal and the, the work you do is just, I get so excited every time we're on a call and every time I see you guys, it's, it's one amazing thing after the other. And I will say, you guys are such an example of follow the coaching and really keep open and keep moving ahead. And uh, just, it's just been such an honor to, uh, to be with you from the beginning, which was really cool. I think I was the first one that ever taught you about <laughs> coming in here, which is awesome. All right. So today, what I want to do is focus on, I want to kind of, it may feel like we're taking a, maybe a tad step back. One of the things I've been noticing and um, throughout my long history of what I do, I've been doing, uh, doing this for 35 plus years. Um, and you were talking about celebration. So my son just had another baby. So I'd have another granddaughter that we just are celebrating. And it's my father's birthday today. We are celebrating so a lot of family celebrations. But through the years, um, I've probably coached over a thousand women in their business in different businesses. I've been a corporate trainer. I have been a producer, an actor, writer, director. I have sold um, Mary Kay and done multi-level marketing. I've been in real estate and mortgage. And then, of course, in marketing. And, um, and then so business coaching is something I've done for years. And what I'm really noticing now that's kind of coming to the forefront is the fact that you know, not all of us that start a business went to college and have an MBA in business, right? Like we, like Mershita said, we get started and we get moving and we're doing the best we can from what we see and what we get here and there. And as you get down the road, the holes in what you've started start catching up with you at some point. So I want us to, today we're going to take a little bit of a step back and we're going to go through the truly what is necessary to set up a successful business 
I'm going to give you the lists. These are, you, I'm not going to send them to you. You're going to see them here and that's going to be it. <laughs> it's like a really great list of what exactly you need. And the more importantly, the order to do it in, we'll go through it. And I'm going to hit on some of the things that I feel really make the biggest difference. And then afterwards, we'll come back and I can go back to the list and you guys can ask questions and kind of see where we are. But I'm going to share my screen now. Let's see, and let me pull up my notes real quick. Okay, now y'all can't see the notes, right? You just see the quick start thing. I haven't ever done this like this. I usually talk just yap, yap away, but I wanted to be sure I didn't miss some things with you guys today. All right, so um, I am the founder of She CEO, and that is where I help powerhouse women skyrocket to consistent growth without working harder. And as you heard Marshita say, that's, that's really the key. It's to continue to do more of what you want, bringing in more abundance and really be doing only what you want to be doing, even the, the passion pieces in your business as well as in your life. Uh, and my background is in education and psychology, and um, I have really worked with women at every level of their business. And recently, though, I became a part of a collective of master business coaches, and um, we've come together uh, with this common purpose and real passion, which is to help the go-getter really completely set up start up and grow their business in a way that's unique to them without the struggle and overwhelm. So it's a business school called Quick Start Business School, and it's really a 12-month course. And in it, we have weekly short trainings on video, audio, and transcript. You can read them. And then there's a workbook that guides you through each step. And this does the specific piece you learned. You'll put it all together. And then we have two live calls, Q&A calls each month, and an opportunity to add tech help on top of that. So what we were seeing was... Um, people coming in to different businesses and um, they would start and they would want to start a business and that's not necessarily what whoever they were working with did. And so we have made it available as an affiliate for those who don't do this and can help other people learn to have a business. Or if you've got one and you are, it's, it's really for someone, anybody starting new in business from the beginning, or if they already have one and it hadn't really taken off or it's kind of getting stuck in places, I'm gonna take you through this order through everything you need and nothing you don't need, which is what I see a lot of times, people jumping forward to the things they don't really need yet and not taking care of the basics. And um, we're gonna do that. And this is gonna be the things that really are there to help someone start a business that they love that actually makes money. So putting together all this vast experience that we had, we compiled this, I, I really believe after being in as many business, working with as many business coaches as I have, this is the definitive list of the areas and steps in the order to be addressed for your business, to be the one that you really love, that you've done, that works for you, not a template of someone else's, but one that really works for you and makes money. And from that comprehensive list, there are a few in each one that are commonly left out or they're only done when things go wrong or, or sometimes they are in a way that you've done something before something else and you really need something that happens before that. So this helps you stay proactive in your growth. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna identify those for you today. And we're gonna go through the list. And what I'd like you to do is make a note of any that you may, you may say, ooh, I haven't done that yet. Make a note of those things so that we, if you've got questions afterwards, you can come back, but it'll also show you how many pieces of your business you may have where you may have holes in your business that you need to do and that you need to pay attention to. And if there's a lot of them, or if you really haven't started your business yet, or you're, you aren't making money in it yet, I'll give you a link at the end that you can check out Quick Start Business School and see if it's right for you. Um, uh, Love and Respect is affiliating with this school because they really want to be sure that everyone they're working with has their businesses set up so they can focus on helping you go to the next level and so that you can have the social impact with your business so that you're not worrying about some of the very basics that we have. 
So here are some of the things that are really important when you're first starting out. Oops, sorry, hang on, let me get this back up there. Um, okay, my pages, excuse me, folks, this, let me get my, I'm not sure if that's, what that's showing for you. I wanna make sure it's showing right. Okay, so if you are someone you know that starting a business is afraid of never making money or wasting their money, if you're afraid of getting it wrong or getting lost in the crowd, or the possibility that it's going to be really hard or take a long time. Or maybe you're frustrated with information overload and not sure really what to do next. Or what's working for other people doesn't seem to be working for you. Or you don't have enough clients or the ones that are showing up aren't really ideal. And you really just want to make some money doing something you enjoy and to be inspired and make an impact with your business and for it to be easier and faster. And maybe you want to be happy and thriving and respected and financially able to create the life that you want. And more importantly, be there for the people you love and the causes that you champion. Then that's what this particular business school is for. There are what I think are really these three secrets to really being a successful, having a successful online business. And number one is really being, being able to be a successful, uh, a true business owner. So you have to see yourself that way, right? Whether it's a side hustle or full time, whether you're an employee in your own business or whether you're working for someone else, this front end investment on this back end return of what you're doing. And when you're running your business, it's investing money and that you to make money in less time, it's really seeing yourself as the business owner. Secondly, is the commitment. It's being just so committed to the dream that you don't question it, that, that your persistence continues, that this is like, this is how it is, this is what you're gonna do, you're gonna, you're gonna just stay with it. Uh, it's not this thing of, well, I'll try it and if it works great, if not, I'll stop, or it takes time and money investment and knowledge. And, and this mindset is really the most important piece to fully set up and run a profitable business. You've got to have that mindset of I'm committed to this and this is happening. And I know in this trust and faith that it's going to happen. This willingness to go within and go deep and to complete every step of that business process. And then finally, the third secret I've seen is really a clear structure, but it's got to align with you. It has to be a structure you resonate with. It has to be something you really want to be doing. It allows space for individuality and creativity within a very proven structure. Trying to put it together with a bunch of things here and there leaves holes. And that's what we're going to really look at today are some of the holes that it can leave. And it's, it's sometimes when you're not even starting, you won't get there. And the very reason it's not working, right, is that you don't have a structure that works for you. You've seen someone be successful and you're trying to just do what they were doing. And that's not really going to work for you if it doesn't resonate with you. And then there are... The first, what I'll say, the first piece of the structure is this, and this is basic business pieces that when you first start a business, sometimes you're not aware of. It's really divided into four areas. And so the whole Quick Start Business School does divide into these. As a matter of fact, we do a quarter with each, as Marshida knows, we're all about quarters. And we do a quarter in each so that by the end of a full year, you have the business set up completely with, with no holes in it. Everything's running well. So the first area is your admin. This is the setup. This is all of the preparation required to set up your business with the right structures to support growth and success. Structure is awesome. And structure does need to be set up, but you, your heart, who you are, your passion, your purpose, and how you work is what leads it. It is this, this what Mashita was talking about, this feminine energy that leads, and then the structure is where you place it, but it's important to have it. We don't want to throw the structure out. Uh, we want to keep that because it works for you. So this is the pieces where you're setting up all the structures. Then when that is all set up, you're ready to start up. And this is the lead generating or what you might heard referred to as marketing, right? Now you're ready to get started. Let your ideal clients and customers know you're here and you're ready to serve them. There's a whole lot of things that have to be set up with that. And that's the next section. 
third is when you want to sell out. This is converting all of those leads into buyers, right? It's time to sell out your packages, your programs, your products, your services in a way that feels great. You know, sales can get kind of icky sometimes. It can feel it can feel pushy. It can feel like you're convincing. And that's not what sales is. Sales is saying, hey, I love doing this thing. I'm ex excited about it. I want to offer it to you. And in return, you get to purchase it. So you own it. And then we get to work together or you get to have the product. So that there's a lot of mindset that goes into that too. And then last but not least, of course, is when you're going to really be soaring. And this is the deliverables. So this is when you deliver your product or service. So you've got clients, you have customers. Now what, right? In order to really soar, You'll put in place additional structures to support them for a wonderful experience, as well as to support you to allow this next level vision to happen. And that next level is where you begin to really grow and scale your business. But if you try to do all this growing and scaling without these pieces in place, it will fall apart. It's like a home that you try to build without a foundation on it. It can sink in the sand. It can slide down the mountain. It can, you know, all of those things can happen to it. All right, let's look at the setup. So here it is. This is your list. <laughs> this is when you get to see it. So here is the list of all the things that need to be set up in your business. And most importantly, in this order. This is the key. It's not do it like I do it. It's do it in this order. Do these things in this order. And we've set it up like this because we know what mindset you need to be able to do the next thing, right? So first is to really create your vision. You need to understand those four areas of the business, admin, lead generating, conversion, and deliverables. Then you work on your time management and organization. How am I going to do this? When am I going to do this, right? Next is your business plan. This is how am I going to work? What do I want to do? What do I want to sell? How is this going to be for myself? And then the next one is your niche. This is very specific, very unique to you and what you do with your product. Um, let's say someone is selling candles, right? Well, they're going to be a little different from someone else's candles, right? You're not going to be creating the exact same candles. So your niche is how does it unique to you? And then next is the mindset on permission, self-permission, and the comparison trap. Once you've kind of gotten that mindset in peace, you're really ready to work with your avatar or ideal client. And you're going to get very specific. You know, this is kind of one of those things. It feels like, oh, everyone would benefit from this. But the more general you go, the less people know who it is you're talking about. The more specific you are, the more impact you will make. After you've got your ideal client set and your customer avatar, then the mindset you're going to work on is general abundance, allowing in and receiving abundance in all areas of your life. And then you're going to get to really start creating your deliverable format. Meaning if you have a service, how are you going to deliver that to the people that want that service? What are you going to do? Are you going to do um, a coaching call? Are you going to deliver a service? Do you do, um, do you, I, I heard Marcia talk about someone that has a beauty salon. Are you going to fix hair? Are you going to give facials? You know, what are you going to do? Are you going to sell candles and how are you going to get those to your customer? And then next is one of the biggest mindset shifts that has to happen for you to move forward. And that is the imposter syndrome mindset and thinking that you are being a fake or a fraud somewhere that, that feeling underneath it all that who am I to do this? And you know, if you have something on your heart, you know that you are the one to do it, but our mind, we have, we have, we have, um, programs and patterns in our mind that hold us back from moving forward to what our dreams are. So that has to be addressed next. Then you get to set up all your business admin. This would be your financial, banking, 
if you um, have contracts you need to have together, uh, email things that you're going to use, how are you going to do all of the back end work, think of it as the office work for your business, what are you going to use and how and we have that all listed out in the course, but that's the next thing. So do you notice that you didn't do your business admin setup? before you did some of these other things? Do you see the order and how important that order is? So knowing what you're doing in your business and your niche and your avatar are super important before you even decide how you set up that business. If you try to set up a business before you know those things, you're going to end up having to go back and redo things. And I'm all about time. Marcita knows this. <laughs> this is like my thing is time. My time is so precious. I have time on this earth and that is precious to me. And I want to be using it for everything I want to be doing. And I certainly don't want to be redoing stuff. And this is one of those areas that happens. And next, of course, is to then work on your branding. I see so many people start a business and they try to start with a logo first. Look how far down the list that is. That's way down the list, right? So then you do your branding, your messaging first, and then the branding aesthetics, colors and fonts and logos and those kind of things. So this is the admin setup. And of these, the three most important I see and I find is number one, someone really understanding that there are these four areas that have to really fully be set up so that you've got your admin set up, then you get leads. Once you have people that are interested, then you convert them and sell to them. And then after you sell to them, you deliver that product and service and you have to have things set up with that. So that's one of them. The second one to me is this permission, personal permission. Do I have permission to be in the world? Do I have permission to be visible? Do I have permission to say this? And that comes from you and your heart, right? Your connection to heart and soul and source. That's where that comes from. And then this comparison trap. A lot of times in the past, we used to talk about market research a lot. And we used to talk about, look at other people that do what you do. Well, there's a big little sticky point in there. When you start looking at other people that do what you do, your brain will immediately go, if you have any fear at all, it will go to comparing you to them. And when we compare ourselves to other people, that doesn't work. It's like apples and oranges. Each human is unique and different, each business is. So there's no, there's no way to really compare when you know all is well. You don't compare. You're happy for people having what they have because you get to have what you have as well. So those are the first two. And then the third one I would say in this list is really working on the mindset of the imposter syndrome, that who am I? Who am I to do this? And if you're called to do something, that's who you are. You know what you know what you know, right? You know that you want to do something. You know that you will learn. And so if you stay within your area of expertise and your area that you know, then you are the one to be doing this. No one else can do this business the way you can. So you can't be an imposter, right? But that is a mindset that has to really be worked on. All right, here's the next list. This is the startup list. So this is lead generating. This is where you're going out onto the sidewalk and you're saying, hey, hey, come on in, come into my store, right? Come into my online business. That is generating a new person. This is someone that doesn't know what you're doing. You'll, you'll hear it referred to as marketing. Marketing really covers both lead generating and conversion, but think of lead generating as you're generating a bunch of people that are your ideal clients to come in and look at what you have in your store. Kind of think of it that way. So that's the first thing. You've got to really understand this whole process and what you're doing so that as you move forward, you know what you're doing there. Next, another mindset. Do you notice how you do a couple of actions and then you clear out some mindset, right? It is equally as important. And this one is visibility. Well, of course, if you're about to get out on social media, you're going to have to be okay with being seen. So that's the next mindset that you want to work on. And then third, and I love this one. It's not my favorite per se, but I love it. It is really honing in on the specific problem your ideal client has that you solve for them, the one that really bothers them, and the specific result that they get 
from your product or service, the promise you give of the result that they will get. Narrowing this down is key. It is how people stop scrolling and look at what you're doing. Next, okay, well, if we're out there, people are gonna ask to, ask to buy our products. So we are gonna have to work on that money mindset. Now we worked on abundance, right? In the setup part, generally, now, when you get into lead generating, you need to get a little more specific into that money, like Marshita was talking about, that financial and money mindset. There has to be some letting go of what it means and things that are holding you back, right? After you've worked on that a bit, and of course, you'll work on that continually <laughs> throughout, but after you work on that, you're ready to really get a little more specific in the details of your offer of what you are selling. So this is where you get a little more specific about if you're doing the candles, like how much are they going to cost? What, how many are they going to get? What size are they going to be? If you're doing a service, it's like, well, if I'm coaching, how many hours do I want to do that? How many months? So it's the specifics of what you are selling. Then you're going to go back and look at that ideal client and that customer avatar, and you're going to get super specific on the fears, frustrations wants and aspirations of that ideal client. This person, this ideal favorite person for you to sell to, what are they afraid of? What are they frustrated with? What do they really want? And who do they really want to be? These are the problems and solutions that they're really, really working on and want. And this has to be in their words. We use the term a lot in the coaching world of the psychobabble where we're like, we know what they need. We know what that's really going on, but that's not what they're saying in their head. That's not what they're saying to their friend. And that's what you've got to hook into here. After you've gotten that a little more dialed in, now you're going back to mindset. And this is your confidence. This is where you really work on having the confidence to move forward, knowing all is well, knowing you're going to be fine, knowing that as you step forward, things are going to be working out for you, no matter what it is and how it works out. And then now this is my favorite. You're going to work on flipping their objections. So you, when you're selling, right? If you, you don't sell every single person that you offer, and when you don't sell to them, they'll tell you why. I don't have enough money. That's going to take me too much time. That's going to take too long. Uh, I have to talk to someone first. I'm already doing this. Whatever those objections are, you're going to listen. And you're going to hear what those are. And those top objections, you're going to flip them into reasons to buy. Do you remember earlier in this, I told you about what the secrets were? I'm going to pop back. I'm going to show you this. This, you see this? These are our objections for Quick Start Business School flipped to reasons to buy. So people were like, yeah, I'm just doing this. I don't really know if I want to, you know, whatever they were saying, they weren't ready to step into being a real business owner. That was their objection. Or they said, I think I want to do this. I've tried it. I've stopped. They weren't really committed to doing that dream. And so when we make that a secret or a reason and having this clear structure that aligns with you, their objection was a lot of coaching schools before I've tried business before and it didn't for me. Well, usually it's because it aligned with them. So that's an example of flipping the objection. That's like my favorite. It has made the difference in my sales conversion. Um, so when I have a sales call, I used to, I was always, I've been doing sales. I sell workbook encyclopedias door to door back in 1984. So I've been doing sales for a really long time. And in that, my conversion rate got better, you know, over the years, I sold real estate, I sold all these other things, right, it got better, but it was still somewhere around the 75%, which is still really, really good. Once I started flipping the objection in my lead generating, my sales percentage is above 95% now. It's closer to 98, somewhere around there. Uh, but by the time I'm on a sales call, we already know because of this, because of this lead generating list and the reason that these are in this order. Next, after you do that, it's going to be your social media. Now, which 
which platforms. Now, you probably have known people and maybe even you that started with putting things on Facebook and Instagram way long before you did all this stuff, right? So now you see how far down the list this is. So if you think of this, we do 13 weeks in each section. Week 13 is where we do assessments. If you look at that, that's 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 weeks of doing a business before you get on social media. 22 weeks of setup and getting things ready. And that's not usually how it goes. So that's why there's usually some holes in businesses. So you've got your social media next and then comes another mindset. And this one, this one can last a while. So you're going to work on this a lot. And this is judgment. It is judging others. It's judging yourself. Competition. Fear judges. Fear is in competition. Love love emotions all is well knows that everyone's just doing their thing and you don't need to judge it as bad or good it just is love knows that everyone is there to do what they're going to do and there's no competition there's plenty for all that one's a tough one because our culture really tells us differently especially the business culture tells you differently compete win be the best all this stuff is coming in yeah you want to do your best but be the best, there's no way. Everybody's different. It's impossible. That's why it felt impossible, right? Then you have content creation. Now you're going to start writing posts. That's way long into it. Now you're going to start writing posts. And then you're going to do your graphics for your marketing and put it together and begin posting. So this is all of your lead generating pieces. And these three are my biggies on this list. Really understand what lead generating is. Flipping that, whatever their objections are, into reasons for them to buy way before you talk about selling to them. See, we haven't talked about selling yet, have we? This is all in your lead generating. Then really working on that judgment and competition piece. That is vital for yourself. So this is your list for lead generating. Okay, let's go to sales now. So now we're ready to sell out. This is your conversion. And I've been calling it conversion in our, uh, in our groups and with my clients, because when we talk about sales, people have feelings about that, that usually are a lot of patterns that don't feel very good. So I like to brain hack around those things and use different words so that it's a gentler thing so you can move forward. And this is what you're really doing. You are taking that lead you just got and you're converting them into a buyer. So conversion sales, when you sell, you are converting them from someone that just knows about you into someone that is actually a customer or client, right? So that's what conversion is. So number one, understanding conversion and sales and what it really is and what it really means. Number two, oh my goodness, we work on this a lot. The mindset around selling. Selling is a service. It's a service. It is offer, listen to the words, I'm offering, I'm, I'm serving, I have a gift. If I kept it to myself, that would, that would not be very loving, right? So it's a loving act of offering a service or product, and it's loving to offer it for financial exchange because it's not charity, it's not a give out. The freebies people don't honor with as much value as if they have exchanged something for that. And in our world, we use money. That's what we use to exchange instead of you know other barter products like we used to always do that just got confusing. And so now we use money, that's all it is. And so there's some mindset pieces that really have to be shake, shaken loose. Next is opting in. And this is opting in to an email list. When you have an online business only, if you don't have a brick and mortar store and you don't have a product, you have a service business that you do online, the only thing you own is that email list, that contact list. Because anything on social media, you guys were there when Facebook went down, right? Right? You saw when that happened. <laughs> like they could do anything at any time. Those platforms belong to them. Our stuff on there could go away at any time. So you want to keep your list and opt these leads into this list. It's also when this, someone gives you an email, 
They've given you an exchange for more. They've given you an exchange for more, like a sample of your work. They've given you exchange for a sample. Here, I'm going to give you your, my email in exchange for a sample of what you do. And now you can convert within that group. It's like a Facebook group is also a conversion group and those kind of pieces. So you want to have people opt into an email list. Next, huge mindset piece to work on, worthiness and value. Your own, your business worthiness and value, the worthiness and value of your clients and customers. This piece is, we would think that that would be, you know, that, that should be easy. We all know that every human has worth. We all know that what everyone does is valuable, but we have grown up in this world, in this world, and we have, our brains have learned things and experienced things and taken them in as meaning things just for our protection. Our brain did that, but in doing so, it is holding us back. And this is one of the main areas that does that. And then you're going to work on your initial conversion strategy or funnel. This is where you're like, I'm going to give you this, this sample, right? Here's this free thing. Here's a workshop. Here's a, um, a, a taste of what I make. Here's something free. And then you're going to come into my email list. And then I'm going to give you something else. And we're going to work on converting you into a buyer of this product I have. And that's your funnel. And then you're going to work on conversion content. Conversion content is different than lead generating content. Lead generating is their fears, frustrations, wants, and aspirations. Conversion content is those objections flipped. It is things about um, why they should trust your product or you, your credibility. These, this kind of content is different and you'll use that in emails. You will do posts with it, but you mostly do it inside conversion uh, groups in clubhouse groups. You'll do that in Facebook groups, emails, those kind of things. But there's very specifics behind that. Then the next mindset is trust and expertise. And that's trusting in yourself, and your own expertise and being able to get out of your own way to do your best work, then is really working on using those emails, email campaigns to convert into sales, whether it's a course or a product or a service that you have, this email is a way to really give them some great value and move them along the process so for them to buy from you. After that, we're going to kind of go over the next kind of more advanced opt-in, which is a workshop or webinar, our challenges, those kind of things. These in the past have been places where people pitched their products or their services, right? How many of us have watched a webinar and know when it's getting to that point and we kind of click off because they know what they're about to sell us, right? We don't do those this way. We pitch this action that they can take to get more information that we will then convert them right and this goes over all there's some different ways to do that where you're giving great content the other big pitfall here is giving away too much is giving something of great value away for free that someone doesn't really think has value because you gave it away for free also giving away so much that they don't need to buy anything from you if i go into a um, we have a store in the U.S. called Nothing Bunt Cakes, and they do these little bunt cakes, and they taste so good, and they have samples at the front of the store, so it's just a little square that you get, and I go in there, I take the sample, and it's awesome, and I want more, so I go buy one, right, but if they were giving away the whole cake, why would I go buy one? Like, there's no reason for me to go in there and buy a cake if they've given it to me. I'd say thanks, and I'd go eat it. But if you give just a sample and they're like, that's good, I want more. That's what you want to be doing in your workshops and your challenges, boot camps, those things. And then, of course, your mindset now is about energy. And this is about your vibrational energy of knowing all is well and the momentum of that. And then when you get into fear energy and what that does to your actual marketing, to your conversion and to your clients. And then, of course, really working on the sales pitch and your calls to action. 
what you're doing in sales that that where you're really listening for if they're a good fit or if what they really want so that it doesn't have that icky feel to it. And then of course, call to action where you're really giving them an action to take. And then of course, the sales conversation, which is very different now than what it used to be. It's much more gentle and much more loving. So in sales and conversion, three things, worthiness and value mindset, what conversion content is as opposed to lead generating. And then this mindset around your energy of how you feel is the most important thing you do in your business. Your energy is exuded in everything that you're doing there. And then we have the SOAR. So this one is now you've sold something and now you need to deliver it. So you've got, what is this process? How am I going to de deliver this thing? Do I need to ship it? You know, will they do Zoom? Will they do a Facebook group? How is it going to be delivered? Your mindset is all about listening to your intuition and only doing inspired action. Now you really be need to begin listening to yourself so much more and be sure you're only doing things you want to be doing. The third one is onboarding a client or a customer when they, once they buy and now they bought from you, what is their experience going to be like? Then you'll work on the mindset around boundaries on why boundaries are good for you and for others. And then you'll work on delivering that product or service and how that, that happens, your structures behind that. And now you're ready to really think about your next level vision. Now that you've got leads, you're converting them, you're selling, you're delivering, what's next? And then, of course, we're going to come back and talk more about customer care. When you really take care of customers and clients, they stay with you, they recommend you. And it's not about you having to ask them to do that. It's because you've really taken care of them. And now is the mindset that is another one of my, oh my gosh, this one, so important detaching from the outcome you want. Where's the money? Where's the clients? Where's the things, right? And connecting to the experience of the abundance of finances, these awesome clients and connecting to the experiences that you're having. That's a major shift. It's very different than what most businesses do. And it is now that you've had some clients, this is going to make a lot more sense to you. And you're going to be really ready for that. And then we're going to go into advanced time management. This is what Marshina was talking about, how now people are like, oh, you look so busy. Oh, no, no, no. I've just got my structure set up so that I can go play more and I can have more and do more. And my clients are even better taken care of and I'm better at what I do. This is advanced time management. This gets super exciting now at this point. Then we're going to talk about momentum and how when you feel good, it, that energy works for you. And when you are in fear, that energy holds you back, no matter how hard you're working. That is a super important mindset. And then we're going to start making a plan for that next level vision. It is time to keep moving up, right? And next, we're going to really discuss some advanced sales. So you've gotten some sales down. Now you want to move into some advanced sales techniques where you're not spending so much time on that part. It's much easier. The flow is easier and that's happening better. So these are the 12 areas of the deliverables that you're going to be wanting to have ready so that you can really get moving to the next section. So these are the socials for Quick Start Business School. If you want to follow, we, of course, do give samples there. So there's lots of great little tips there. Um, it is on Instagram. It's at Quick Start Business School. And on Facebook, it's at QS Biz School. And so you can follow us there. Now. I told you that we're part of this collective master business coaches and experts. We make up the Quick Start Business School and our purpose and passion is to help go-getter women completely set up, start up and grow their business online in a way that's unique to her without struggle using this Quick Start Business School process. So most women with a business, whether they're brand new or been at it for a while, are really kind of at a loss on how to create this business that they love and makes them money. And no matter if it's a side hustle or a full-time business, sometimes they don't know where to start or they've gotten started and aren't sure what's wrong. They don't really know what to do next. And they really have this feeling that they might be really losing money and time in the way that they're doing that. 
And oops, sorry, I just clicked that open. Um, and in that, it's it's having these pieces together and ready that is really making them do this in a way that actually moves them forward. So the answer is it's it's not that hard. Um, it does take focus and consistency. And it does mean that you're going to need to be doing certain things in a certain order. And that's the most important piece. So if, as we were going through this list, or if you talk to someone that wants to start a business and you're not a business coach, <laughs> this is where to send them. And you can really check out the business school here. Um, this is in affiliation with uh, Love and Respect and with Mershida and Zeal's business. And so you can go to bit.ly forward slash love and respect QSBS. And there'll be more answers about what it's about and what's going on with that there. And if that is something that you you look at and you have more questions, you can get in touch with Mershita and she can let me know and we can kind of help you make decisions on what you want to do with that. All right. I'm going to kind of leave this up for a minute and uh, check the chat real quick. Okay. It's all me, Darla. In all right. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. Okay. Questions. Wow, thank you so much, Dala, for sharing Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And you know, I wish I had known all that maybe 20 years ago. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, and you know, everything that you have shared is so awesome. I think I've done a lot based on what you mentioned, Good. but I have a lot, I have some holes that I need yeah. to yeah. Did you yeah. notice that they were in one area or another, or were they kind of throughout all, a few throughout all? Uh, I think it's a few in in various in each places. area. Okay, yeah. good, 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 good. And uh, and it's amazing the way you put it in that order, which yes, I have um I had no clue right because when I first started out, I was jumping all over the place. And, that's what uh, that's pretty much what all of us did for a while, <laughs> right? I know it's like we're figuring this out and jumping all over the place, and that's why. Uh, the other business coaches and I got together and we're like, look, this is, this can be easy. We, we can make this easy. Uh, but there are some, we see the holes that are missing, right? It's, that's pretty much how we all did it. Yeah. So it's amazing how you put everything together in such a simple um, way. Of course, for a lot of business owners who, who are starting out, it's not easy because I started out 20 years ago to be where I am today. Mm -hmm. And it's been 20 years of heart, sweat, blood, and tears. <laughs> so I'm Yeah, not... you know, it, the, it's, this list doesn't make that not happen. Uh, and that's why the mindset pieces are where they are. We try to minimize it as much as possible. But having your own business, you know, we've heard this. Marshida and I's mentor used to say this all the time. The best form of personal development is to have your own, is to start your own business. And, and really, that's so true. Uh, however, there are ways to do it where there's a little less of that now. And so many people try to piecemeal it together from a little here and a little there. And that's kind of where, where that happens. And we've definitely seen that. So, so kudos to you for hanging in there. You can really see your commitment to your dream, uh, which is really important. And you are definitely in the right community at this point to be moving on up and further. And now you have some information on where you might fill in some of those holes, which would really be helpful for you. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. For that, that, Absolutely. Um, that breaking down. And now I see it like, wow. Okay. So <laughs> what are the holes that I need to fill and what I have already done and how I could improve my business. Yes. So that yes. this year, 2022 is all about soaring because I built some systems. I built a lot of stuff. I have my social media. I have my publicity. I have my book. I have so much things that yes and then now i'm like okay i'm just needing to do whatever the holes and i'm good and i'm gonna absolutely start. this is something that um we work on a lot is when we've got a lot of these items as you listed 
to get that structural foundation really solid so that you can enjoy your work on those. And it won't be so much blood, sweat, and tears. It'll be a lot more joy and fun in doing that. And now you know what it is to work on to really solidify that structure. And that's so important. That's going to be really great for you. Yeah, so thank you again, Dala. Thank you for Absolutely. that clarity and that wisdom that I got out of this sharing today. Awesome. And I'll definitely work on whatever holes that I need to work on and I'm I'm good to go. Thank you so awesome. much. Awesome. Well, that's so wonderful. That is so wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Any other questions on anything else too? I'm happy to answer. Um, if, even if it's most of you may have all this <laughs> kind of with a I few pieces that you want. So yeah, for that, you have a question? Answer. You have unmuted yes. yourself. Um, uh, for the comments, and the one question is, I don't know whether I might have missed this. What is on body in your soul? <laughs> awesome. Okay, let's go back to that list. So onboarding is if you have a service business, uh, even if you have a product business, but if you have a service that you're doing, when someone buys, so they click and they buy and they've given the money, right? What do you do next to bring them on board in your service? You know, do you send them an email with details in it? Do you give them a call? What do you do next? Even if you sell a product, you are onboarding them now as a customer instead of a lead, right? You're going to move them from lead to customer. And maybe you want to send them different emails to see how their product was. Did they like it? What, how do you have them in your system and what happens for them as they begin being a customer for you? That's what onboarding is. I've got, and, uh, I've got a few other things now. Essentially, yes. I, I, I think you have conflicting, I don't know what you call it, features, attributes, the way I run, the way I think. I can be very orderly. I can be very specific in what I want. And yet I can, uh, and, and as I draw my uh, uh, specifics, right, I get stuck along the way. And I, I'm working so much into one particular arena that I totally forget what I should yes. do where I'm going, that's one point. The other thing is, as Mushida would know me very well, I've been too um, focused. Some people may be all over the place in terms of doing too many businesses and too many interests. Mine is so specific into serving schools that my mindset was I was just a music instructor. But I have gone out of that, but it was very sure. wrong in that when, uh, you know, serving schools as an external service provider and not looking at myself as a business owner, as, a, as right. an entrepreneur. Yeah, yes. so uh, I have gone out of that, but I'm it's still somewhere in between. And then um, having to do like so much, I, I, I tend to also like to do a lot of these little things, but then at the same time, it's conflicting, like oh, so much to do, you know, so yeah. Yes. Yeah, and if you're doing, so this list is kind of the things that all need to be set up, right? So this thing about so much to do, one of the things that we do um, is I have the women in my program come up with a minimum that they're going to do no matter what. So that right. minimum gets done every week, but it's a minimum. Like what is at the very least going to happen yeah. that if I got sick or something happened, that would still happen. Right. Then instead of a to-do list, we do kind of a menu of what I want to do. And the important thing is, what do I want to be doing? Not what should I do? What do I have to do? What am I supposed to do? This is right here, this inspired action mindset. This is where if I am doing what I really want to be doing and my energy is excited and happy around it, I will have much more impact with that one thing than I would if I did a bunch of busy stuff, right? So it's it's it may be some shoulds. If you hear should in there, that's a no. That means I'm afraid if I don't, something will happen. So it's want. So it's making that shift first from what I should do to what I could do, right? What I should do to what I could do. And then what do I want to do? That'll help narrow that list out and you won't feel so that busy energy, that kind of frenetic busy energy will subside. Right. 
um, just just to add that uh, for myself actually, because what I teach my students now, I have to preach it to myself. Yes. <laughs> oh, we all do. Rashida will tell you. I'll be like, I'm so glad you asked because I needed to hear that again. <laughs> it was like, yes, but yeah, you, you do. Know, you Preach, preach exactly that because you see those issues in your students and now okay I gotta be my own student <laughs> yes well and you know I I believe that's one of the reasons we have our desires on our heart is because when we do learn something and we feel so um such relief from finding out whether that is you know our Finally, my skincare is great and I feel great. Finally, I have a, a, a creative thing I wanna do and that makes me really happy. Or finally, I'm helping someone in this area. When we've done that and we've gotten excited about it, then we help other people with that, right? But we help other people with that and it helps us feel good again too. But that's the beauty of love. That's that cycle of love that a business can be. And I do wanna say something to you. The fact that you're so specific about what you do is your superpower. Yeah. <laughs> so that is that is the best thing. The more specific you are about what you do, it, the easier it is for people to know you and to refer you and for you to yeah. step up as the owner and the the expert in that area and feel really good about what you're doing. So that's a, that's a great thing. What we do, and one of the things that um, we're working on now is this next level vision plan is after you've gotten all of the pieces together and you get yourself up to making 250,000 a year in what you do, now you're ready for other businesses. It takes all the way till then that you've worked through enough in your business where you have enough finances to be able to support it, where you've had enough experience to be able to do it. You have enough clients to support another business. So you can have one business that has a couple of different products in it. But when I talk about ideal client, when I talk about your customer avatar, that is your one, it is your favorite. It's who all your marketing goes for. And that person is the one that would buy the different things that you have. If you find yourself with two different people you're selling to, be sure you're already at a level in your business where you're making over 250,000, and I'm talking US dollars a year before you do that, because that is literally starting over from number one on this list and going through all 52 with that second business. So if you're in an area where, um, you're doing some product, let's say it was the candles again, right? So they sell candles and they sell maybe candles with designs and they can sell candles that have different smells and they have all these things. If they sold another product that went with candles that the same person liked, that'd be great. But if they decide just to add tea, selling tea, and it's a different client that wants it, that's another business. Even if they're like, oh, I'm going to bundle those together. But if this person doesn't want to buy it, then that's a different business. So this specificity around what you do and getting the whole thing set up and getting that business to that structural level of really being solid, then you're going to have, amazingly, you will have tons of time because you're going to be making a lot of money. You'll have a lot of people working for you. Now you're ready to work on other businesses. So what you're doing being so specific, that's great. All right. Thank you. Uh-huh. I, I like the point that um, it actually starts from the mindset, and that's how I started my work, my, my business. I come my own uh, profession, which was never done before by anybody in terms of doing it full time, because nobody saw that you're doing this. I mean, that like, it looks like something that you do as a hobby, as a you know, as a community service kind of thing. So um, I've got to go back to that passion and let that be the driving force again. Awesome. Like going back, you know, to zero again. Yes. Discovering. And going back, I, I find that when people start talking, say, yeah, I, I did that. It, it was like 10 years ago in, in my in my vision statement. And well, you had you probably had an intuitive feeling about mm -hmm. that that was the right thing to do. Yeah. And then as we get into the busyness of our yeah. businesses, sometimes we forget yeah. what that original intuition was, what that original connection was with our heart on what we really what would work. And that's what you want to continue to come back to. You see 
in this last one, we really work on those pieces because we tend to lose that as we get busy with working on our business. All right, thank you. Awesome, absolutely. Yeah, Pamela has a question in the awesome. chat. Yeah, how to balance between free versus paid when it comes to information and services? Awesome, Marshida, you know I love this question. Okay. <laughs> So one of the pieces of setting up your business is when you know what your real offer is, what it is you're going to sell. And that becomes this honored piece that you will only sell for money because it has so much value. So protect it. Boundaries around it. This is, this is the value, right? Whatever that is, if it's a product or service, it is the value. So you will not give away any of this and that is the how to or the product itself it is how to do the thing you can tell in a sample what they need and why they need it but not how to do it you can give in a sample a piece of the product but not the whole product right so that's the line the line is what and why is fine to give away how that's your value and the what and why is what leads them to want more if you do well you need this and this is why you need it and here's how to do it then they'd be like oh well i don't need you <clears throat> and now they're not going to buy if you give big whole samples of your product why would they like the cake I was talking about? Why would they buy? But that tends to be what I keep in my mind. I can say what they need and why, and the how is what I sell. And so even like this, so quick start business, I've given you, this is it. This is what we do in there, these things. But did I tell you how to do each one? No. <laughs> right? So that's, that's what comes with the course, right? But this is valuable. It's very valuable. Having this list is great. It's a great sample of what you need, right? And if you notice in the sample that you've got pretty much most of that, and there's just a few things and you're fine, then you don't need to buy this, right? But if you looked at this list and you were like, oh my gosh, there's a lot in there I don't do and I need to know how, then that would make sense for you then to go in and, and buy the course and do the course, right? So you can see this is what you need and I've told you why you need it, but I didn't tell you how. That would have been giving too much away. And the other thing I wanna say about that, because this is an awesome question, is back over in lead generating, that's not where you do that. Once they've come into the store, they've given you an email, they've come into a Facebook group, they've, they're somewhere where they've given you something, that's their ticket to find out what they need and why. So you guys are getting this because you are in Rashida's group. That's why you're getting it. So that's, that's why we give it. If we do this workshop somewhere else, someone will give us an email and they'll come on our Zoom. And so then they get it. Because then we can follow up and we can say, did you have questions? What did you think for this? Was there, does this seem like this is a list that you got most of it or not? You know, what, what can we help you with? So the samples occur inside the store, not out on the sidewalk. I was at a, uh, uh, during the holidays, they have these big markets where they sell items for us to buy for gifts. And I was at, they call it Nutcracker Market. And I was at this, and I was going by noticing when they were out in the walkway giving samples, I did not stop and look at the store. When they were inside the booth and I had to go in to get the sample, I kind of felt this like I needed to, in exchange, at least look around. <laughs> so that's that feeling. Think about it. Am I out on social media is out on the sidewalk? Okay. A Facebook group where they have to get in or an, uh, a Zoom meeting or something where they have to give you something to get in the store. Now they get more because they have taken a risk and walked inside because someone might try to sell them something, right? So they took the risk. So they get more for coming in. That's kind of how I think of it in my head. The sidewalk is new leads 
fears? Are you fe afraid of this? Frustrated with this? Do you want this? Do you aspire to be this? Great. Come in my store because I'm going to help you with this problem and this solution. Come on in. And when they come in, I give them the sample and I say, here's what you need and why. And when they say, well, how? I say, great. Come on in and buy the how. Like that's the whole thing, right? That's how the whole thing works. That's such an awesome question. I love it. All that. right. Thank you so much, Dala. I think that's <laughs> very enlightening for me. <laughs> good, good. This will make a big difference for a lot of you. I know Mershita's seen this in the groups that she's been in uh, before where I was coaching before and in the group now where, where we're working. She's seen the women that were doing that and how they've shifted. And we've worked on that in her business too, about what all they were giving. They have such big hearts, you know, and they're giving so much. And it's like, but that's not really, they're not using it. It's free. They don't care, you know, but bring them in the store. Now they're going to really honor it, right? They give it more value because you're giving it more value. That's super important. All right. So uh, are there any other questions? One last one before we close. No. Noraisha, you have a question? No. Maybe I have some, something to share to okay. Darla. Yes. Um, I actually love your sharing uh, what uh, the point about you saying when a, a client give you an objection, objection and then and then you, you see to it and then and then it's like a challenge. And then yes. when you overcome it, it's a done deal, right? Uh, yes. That's exactly what I have been doing uh, because my, my previous background is doing financial planning before I actually do uh, coaching on holistic now and I'm doing yes. on Aura. Uh, and I realize that um, whenever I handle an objection um, fully, thoroughly, that gives me a closing sale. And, and, yes. um, and, I didn't, and I didn't do the rest of much of the list that you shared, which is so amazing. Uh, but I was just focusing on handling objection. Uh, and amazingly, I, I was having like a one-to-one, one-to-one kind of ratio in closing my clients. And I, I, I didn't know that it's a superpower. And thank you for enlightening that for me. I truly, truly, truly appreciate it today. Awesome. It gives me well, and I think too, and since you're so good at handling objections, if you'll start putting that in some of your content in whatever you're doing in your marketing, you're going to find you're not going to hear objections. That's what has happened for me. The more I talk about it and flip it into a reason to buy, since you've heard them and you know how to handle them, you know now specifically how to flip that into a reason to buy because you've been handling it. That's what you've been doing is turning it into a reason to buy, right? And so now yes. if you start going ahead and sharing that before you get them on the call, you're going to find those calls are going to go faster. You're going to be closing even more and you're going to get more people on those calls because you've already handled it before you even talk to them. So that's such great information that you have and that you feel confident about that is going to be amazing. And it's going to really do a lot to skyrocket your growth. Awesome. Awesome. Truly, truly, truly appreciate it. Thank you, Darla. I love you. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, so wonderful. I'm so glad you all got, got so many good benefits from this. Um, I will be, uh, I have shared the, the link uh, of the Quick Start Business School for those of you who, who said, okay, they want to start even uh, your new business. Like for me, um, with Darla also, we also have another business, right, that we are building, which is the, the social impact, the sustainable land as well. That is also a separate uh, business um, and it's for people who want to um, invest and also create a, a sustainable uh, community with us in Desaru. And uh, we were also working with Darla on that one and um, aside from the current platform that I'm having. So if any of you also uh, would, you know, you are already doing um, your business Business and also you, I know some of you are also um, creating new businesses. Um, I will highly recommend the Quick Start Business School. So that helps a lot for you to really structure your business uh, and uh, making it sustainable while you are doing the current business that you are also doing. Yeah. 
So, um, and this this program is only what? Uh, how long is it, Darla? It's uh, 22. Well, it's a year. So it's yeah. a week. It's by the week. And um, we've got it set up that you have to finish the week before, before you get to get into the next one, because it's the order that's so important. So you can run through them. And some of them you can go pretty quickly, especially if it's your second business you're setting up, you could probably pop through it pretty quickly. You just have to finish it. So you could do it faster. Uh, if it's your second business, if it's your first business and you've got a lot of holes in it, I highly suggest taking the time. Um, but it's like one of the reasons we did this, but we were seeing people say, oh, set up a whole business and make money in six weeks. And we were like, uh, no, <laughs> no, you can make money, but you're not going to set up a business that's sustainable and it's easy. You're going to be working like crazy. And this way you can do that. But if it is your second, you can probably pop through it pretty quickly. Um, because the trainings are only about 15 to 20 minutes long, and then you have a workbook and then you can kind of get moving forward. And don't forget, there's also live coaching calls on getting those pieces set up too. So, okay. Welcoming Kulwinda from Canada, who's here. Thanks for joining. Uh, Yuna also welcome. Uh, and uh, Aisha, who came in uh, later uh, today, uh, this morning. So before we let Darla go, can we all take a photo together? If you can turn on your videos, Yuna and Hariati, if you are okay to turn on your videos, let's uh, turn on the video and, and yes, uh, take a photo. All right. One, two, three. Yay. Oh, Zeal also wants to say, okay, one, two, three. Okay, here we go. Thank you so much, Darla, for everything. And everyone, um, uh, if you can, uh, Darla, if you have to go, it's okay, because I know okay. that, you know, yeah. So thank yeah. you so yes, much, Yes, it's Darla. nighttime where I am. <laughs> oh, Darla and Kuwinda. Have yeah. a ha How's Saturday? Is Saturday good? <laughs> <laughs> Saturday's awesome. <laughs> Very exciting. Saturday. Thank you so, so much for having me. It has been such a joy to be with you. You all are so inspiring to me. And I just am super excited for this group. It's just got so much great ahead of you for 2022. Much love. Thank you. Thanks, Carla. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, ladies, if you can just stay on for a little bit, I'm just going to share some upcoming uh, sessions that we are having, right? Uh, okay, let's go here. Ah, the next uh, forgiveness session is on the 20th of January. And um, I already announced like for some of you here that um, every once in two months, I'm going to start doing a manifestation session as well. So forgive and manifest, forgive and manifest because I have tried and tested the manifesting part of it for about a year now and I saw things happen and it's like for me that every day there are miracles happening in your life but sometimes it's hap it has already happened but we shut off our mind, you know, we don't see it. So as long as you set your intention, you will see miracles, synchronicities uh, and coincidences that happen daily that lead you to what it is that you already prayed for and asked for. But uh, you, you got to be aware of that. So every two months, we'll work on that skill with you to manifest and it's going to be a guided um, bi-monthly, right? So I won't do it monthly. Forgiveness, I'll still do monthly but... Um, one of the months, every two months, there will be both forgiveness and manifest, okay? So that really will get you to where it is that you would love to receive, yeah? Because you already asked for it. You say, oh, I want my money, la. I want my, my uh, quit my job, la. You know, I want my, my relationship, whatever it is, but that some, it's already there, but you don't see it, yeah? Okay, so the other thing is, um, yeah, any of you would like to, uh, you know, some of you who are ending your sessions, if you'd like to know about, um, you know, what is next for you, we can get on a call, or whether it's Quick Start Business School, whether it is really going to social impact or just community, I think that is the best way for us to discuss on what is the right um, uh, um, program that will lead you but I would recommend do not stop sometimes people after a while say oh okay I, I've done coaching already I don't need to be coached anymore and that, that's where they start to plateau and then after that, they have to catch up again when they say oh now there are changes and they realize that 
the business world has has really uh, transformed. So they are not in touch with with a lot of things in business. Yeah, um, and that is something that we'd love for you to even go into a, a low low entry for for community. At least you are in touch. Yeah, with all the developments that's out there in the world and where it can be relevant for your business. So um, yeah, do get a call with us and we will see what is best for you. If you say, if we say no, just stay on where it is right now until you get to a certain level. Then you can move up. We'll be we'll be honest with you on that you know like like uh, i don't believe in hard selling for something i believe in service you know like that darla was saying and it is all about law of attraction also whatever you are uh you want to receive uh, from the universe it's already guided for you to receive it right so we just want to see where is the best uh, uh part for you as well yeah so right okay this actually tomorrow we are going to the sudanese uh, community center if anybody wants to join in in kl you are welcome to join in we want to contribute also can uh, ali who is all uh, who is in our community is heading this um as well and uh, oh that's it i thought i did okay and um desaru during chinese new year we are going to desaru anybody who would like to come and join us as well the yuna and adiba will be will be there so we'll be showing the 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 land that we are developing so you can see and see where you want to come in and where you know if you would love um to you know set up your own plot of vegetation to start your sustainable com your own sustainable community this is all the beginning of all of these things that's going to happen uh in your life yeah those of you who are in other parts of the world i have spoken to someone from philippines yesterday and he said keep in touch uh especially on every level he said if i can do a training on on what it is that we need to do to to be able to handle any food crisis he'd love to attend so i told him i don't have a training but i, I can share wherever you are right now look for a highland water supply uh, because he said in Cebu never had any uh, floods before, but recently there were floods that was overhead and, and the government can only fix the electrical uh, stuff. So they all don't have electricity for one month until end of January. And they were like, what? They don't have any electricity, so businesses are down, internet is down, so some of them who can leave the country, uh, leave the state, they can go to Manila or something, but those of them who don't have any connections, they have to rebuild yeah for now but they say water their supply is just electricity you know so that is also something that um and he was saying i i think it's you know because of climate change right now there's just so unpredictable things uh that's happening uh so he was telling me please direct me also what am i supposed to do i said go go look for that land and you know and then i'll let you know we'll discuss so uh, this this is something that i'm also planning to come out with uh, this year as well um i'm looking for uh, mentors trainers who can guide especially on sustainable living using natural resources i know all of us here are going into the digital um you know you can create money with digital digital but what about what about um if you are you know in a in a in a jungle do you know which food is edible which is not do you know how to survive so these are things that would also be good for us to to know as well yeah and learn yeah and and create your own transport like horseback that i'm i'm taking up right now find your own transport so that that's all of the skills that are something that we are also preparing yeah so uh, but have fun along the process because this is something that you know it is a life journey it is not not all about creating money and and for what purpose there must be purpose in your life in your business your business is for what you know what is the purpose of your business profits for and this is something that uh, we 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 always encourage you to 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 do something good with with the money that you're going to create the millions of money that you're going to create through your business yeah so all right thank you thank you thank you okay so that's it everybody any other questions